Hello and welcome to Verbia e-bike festival. On today's video, you guys have been asking for some insight into combined motor gearbox bikes. Well, hopefully today, we're gonna get a look at one of those bikes in the festival, along with some other 2023 e-mountain bike tech. So we've just literally had to move away from the common style booth, obviously because there's a party going on there. But one bike which really did grab our attention is the new Meta TR. It's a brand new bike for this year. It's uh, 140 travel, 150 up front, uh, 29 inch wheels, and it's got the Shimano EP8 motor with a 630 watt hour battery. Price around about 8,000 euros. Remember it's a all aluminium frame on that bike. So what I think what stood out for me was that bike was it was a really nice color. Tried to get the color and I couldn't understand what the guy was saying. Anyway, it turns out it is Keswick green. Now, a French person saying that will come across quite differently. The Bergstrom ATVC from St. Gallen in Switzerland. Now this is a bike which you can only get in Switzerland. This particular model is around about 7,000 Swiss francs. It's 150 mil travel, it's 29 inch wheels. It features the Bosch Smart System on it, obviously with a 750 watt hour removable battery. Some geometry numbers, we've got 465 chainstay, 75 C2 bangle, there's a 470 mil reach in a size large. There's four sizes to this bike. A 65 head tube angle. It's got, it features a knock block design on the, um, on the head tube there. Carbon front end, aluminum rear, and a VPP, VPP design suspension. Uh, now, what I didn't mention about Bergstrom, they actually came third in the Tour de Mont Blanc and also got some particularly good coffee. Thank you. Lapierre, all mountain, CF. <laughs> wow, the fatigue really is uh, kicking in. It's not a lap yet. Obviously, it's a high bike. It's a high bike all mountain CF6. 160 mil travel front and rear, 29, 27.5. And the color, I'd say, is like a bronzy color, folks. Yeah, bronzy color. Um, full carbon. The great thing about this bike is you've got a great component spec, great geometry for just over 5,000 euros. And the heart of this bike is a 600 watt hour battery and one of my favorite motors, the Yamaha PWX2. Folks, I'm here with Robin from Cavalerie in France. I think I got the uh, pronunciation right. Exciting times, guys, because you might have seen uh, this bike on EMBN a couple of years ago. It wasn't rideable. I've just been for spinning it. Okay, at your request, folks. Yes, I know. I apologize, I've been slow in bringing you the news about combined motor gearbox bikes, but I'm now on the Cavalerie bike here in Verbier. And um, this is my first ever ride on such a bike. My first impressions, well, actually, it feels a bit weird not having to change gear, but I'm going up the hill and it's a very steep hill, I have to tell you. Um, motor, yeah, it's a little bit noisy, but bear in mind, folks, that this is a first prototype. Also going to find my way around here. It's pretty cool that it's actually changing gear. Oh heck, it's getting steep up here. So literally I'm holding this. I would definitely have to change gear normally. And yeah, maybe a little bit stiff here, but we're, we're cracking on. Bear in mind, you can ride this bike in automatic or manual mode. It's working, I have to say it is working. I think this very much is the feature how far away that feature is, I don't know. The guys at Cavalry say pre-orders for this bike are going to be available at the end of this year, 2022, for pre-orders. So, wow, this is really interesting. Well, I seem to be covering a lot of ground very quickly, I have to say that. So I've got a few questions which uh, I'm pondering about. First one is, how is this bike going to react in continually technical terrain? Will it be able to anticipate and change gear when you're going up rocky, steppy, rooty ground? And the other thing to, which has crossed my mind is, what's the reliability of this motor? As yet a little bit unproven, so lots of questions, but certainly definitely on the right road, I think. Uh, folks, I cannot wait to go riding in the hills here in Verbier and a proper off-road scenario on this bike. Obviously, there's lots of features to talk about, which we'll do at another time, the unsprung mass, the rear wheel. When I did the ride a minute ago, I just want to point out that I rode it in automatic mode, but 
obviously you can ride it in manual mode and this is all about the combination of the motor and gearbox let's not forget that so robin's just told me that like they're still working on getting that right they promised me they will do that in november so it's just a simple question of getting that anticipation right when you've got that rocky terrain uh, so that you can conquer different types of environment it's exciting for many reasons it's the first actually combined motor gearbox i've ridden it's 24 kilos get that so Everybody's been saying that these bikes are too heavy. It is definitely not. Um, these bikes will be available uh, next year, I do believe. 130 newton meters. Yes. That's a lot of power. But Robin, can you tell us what's what's the deal with Vallejo and Effie Gear and Cavalry? What's what's going on here? So um, Cavalry is really a showcase for Effie Gear. This is a showcase brand for small quantities uh, and really unique bikes. And the collaboration between Valeo and Effigure, it's all about this motor and the gearbox, the seven speed gearbox into this motor with the automatic shifting and the robotization of, of one of our gearboxes. Yeah, and you're the designer of this bike, right? Yes. So coming on the market soon, you say? Yes, we are launching pre-sales uh, behind um, before the end of the year. So the orders, February time? Yes, February time we will uh, ship all the bike in February and March. Okay. Uh, Tell us quickly about the bike and the geometry, the sizing, what's available here. Okay, so for the, this is an L size right now. This is a prototype in L size. Um, the geometry is about um, 64 and angle, and angle. We have uh, 480 millimeters on ridge. Yeah. We have uh, 430 millimeters on uh, chin stay. Yeah. And we have uh, 70, 78 degrees. On the, on the C2 bangle. Uh, C2 bangle. Yeah, which is Absolutely. what you need. So. What can you say to people? They, they they order one of these bikes. What's the, the service backup with the bike? What's you know? Do you give that as well? Yes, we have an after sale services with the bike. So uh, if you have some troubles with the Valeo motor, Valeo have a special division which is Valeo service, mm -hmm. and we can um, we can deal with your uh, problem all, all around the globe. Okay. One final question: Where can you buy the bikes? On internet, direct to consumer. <laughs> okay, perfect. There you go, folks. A very exciting bike. Like I said, I just went for a ride, my first ride ever at your request. I think it's super exciting. It's definitely the future. Uh, and it's so cool. It's happening in Europe, right? Yes, I'm happening in France. In Lyon. France, in France, Lyon. Yeah, best of luck in the World Cup next year. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, oh, sorry, and price. One other thing, price, 8,500 euros. Uh, I do promise you that at every single new festival or bike event we go to, we will definitely come across a new brand. This isn't actually a new brand, but it's the first time I've seen them. It's a brand called O2 Feel, and they come from a village not far from Lille in the north of France. This version here is 150 mil travel, it's called the Soar. Uh, price about 5,000 euros. Now, what is special about O2 Feel is that they design and develop their own batteries for the bike. So they've got a range of batteries from 500 up to 720 watt hours. So yeah, I think it's a, quite a unique and uh, nice looking bike. So much to talk about with the Fulga Mula. This bike is from Milan in Northern Italy. It's 160 rear, 170 front. I can give you quickly uh, some of the geometry numbers. It's got a 75 and a half C2 bangle, 460 chainstay, 64 and a half degree head angle. And the size large has got a reach of 476 millimeters. Uh, 29, 27.5, but you can actually run the bike 29, 29. Now, one of the cool features about this bike is the fact it's got a sick, it's just got a 500 internal battery with a 125 range extender. So you can take that out and, and run it as a, as a 500. And I think we're going to see more of this in the future. I think this, this trend towards like huge capacity batteries, which are fantastic for long range. I think some people will do short runs. The motor is the central part of the bike. Now, this is the Polini EP3 MX. It's a motor which is used by famous road racer, Marco Melandri, and he's doing pretty well in it. He's obsessed with e-mounted bike racing. And um, it's a motor which you can, you can fix yourself if it went wrong, not that it would do. Uh, you can switch it between um, a speed pedelec and pedelec, and all the parts, like I mentioned, are available off the shelf. 
It's a full carbon bike. It comes in three sizes. And the most important thing, it weighs in at about 21 kilos. I do love a custom bike. Now this is the Lapierre Overvolt GLP2, which belongs to Jean-Yves Vasily from Torgon in the Port de Soleil. Um, it's pretty much a standard bike apart from these few custom parts. First of all, is the custom frame uh, protection from LHDK. He's put a coil shock on there along with the long travel fork. So we're now looking at 160, 170. Obviously, uh, Jean-Yves has got uh, axis shifting and the seat post on there. Um, a nice mixed wheel set from DT Swiss and the Continental Argotal uh, wheel set. Saint brakes, 220 rotor up front. You might have heard me talk about the GLP2 before. This is a bike developed by one of the most successful, probably the most successful uh, downhill and e-bike racer ever, Nico Vulios. Now, the secret of this bike is the fact that the battery is located centrally in the bike. So that means when you ride it, you can manual it or you can endo it as necessary. There's a really good weight balance on it. And the weight, uh, Jean-Yves tells me, is around about 21 kilos. So it comes back to this whole question about lightweight e-bikes versus full power e-bikes. A full power e-bike can actually be pretty close to the light to mid assist bikes as well. This is actually the man himself. Look, what a fine figure of a man for 55 years old, rides an e-bike. Thanks, what do you drink? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jean-Yves, a great few days then at Verbier e-bike festival. Now, when it comes to uh, future motor gearbox bikes, the, the bike we, we rode, the Cavalry with the Vallejo system, uh, whilst it was quite interesting, I don't actually think it's quite there yet. Certainly not as a system package. I mean, there's lots of unanswered questions, such as how the, the motor can react to a mountain environment. Um, there's the sound uh, issues going on there. I think people will want to have a quiet motor, uh, but certainly some things, some food for thought, I think, and uh, a company such as Cavalry and Vallejo will take things uh, a step further in the forthcoming months and years. But that's not all, folks. We have some more very interesting content for you guys coming from the slopes of Erbia. So stay tuned in the next few weeks and uh, you'll see why.